In today's video, we are going to turn this into this. So we get quite a few stuff done, such as setting up our first train line, making sure the fuel is optimized, and then getting that fuel sent to some fuel gens, which will make us some decent power just to push on to the next tiers. And as of right now, it's still not fully optimized because we've got to wait quite a number of hours for the manifold to push through, and that can take a few days. But if you enjoy this video, remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment. And let's start at where we made the first improvements. So if we go back in time and go back to the last episode, you remember that we put down these assemblers. Well, these are making compacted coal, because that compacted coal is going to head over to these refineries over here so we can start making some turbo fuel. And the only thing I'm worried about is getting all these booted up because I feel like it's going to be a stage power kind of step process because we're right now we're only sitting on 4,900 megawatts. And that means we've got roughly, say, about 2,200 megawatts to try and boot all of this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boot up this room in increments. This is going to be increment one, and this is going to be increment two. So this is we're going to boot up this side first, because as we know, this is consuming the heavy oil residue and compacted coal to make the turbo fuel that will go in these pipes. And this whole left side here, or the right side, depending on what you're looking at, is going to be a duplication of this side. Because all of these refineries, its source input is actually crude oil, which is all the way down here, going into these refineries and i'm using the heavy oil residue recipe because inside here is if we look crude oil at 30 per minute and heavy oil residue at 40 per minute and if we do 30 well sorry 600 crude oil divided by 30 is 20 machines and that's exactly what we got right here but as you noticed if we go back into this it's also making a byproduct of resin and resin can be turned into plastic and it can also be turned into rubber but that is a story for future bits to deal with. Because a little bit of a TLDR, at the end of this video, we start setting up recycled rubber and recycled plastic. And we know how crazy, if you know how that can be. So for me to get all this operational, the first thing we need to look at, and by the way, ignore the slug over there, because this, this is Bob. Everybody say hello to Bob. He is going to be in, in uh, a little mascot of this whole place, and he's going to make sure that everything is working optimally. And I might even build him an aquarium. So over on the live stream, because I'm doing the marathon, is, uh, is our little mascot, and he's been kind of looking at us, looking after us and all that kind of stuff. But back to today's agenda, we need to get this compacted coal up and running. And what does compacted coal uh, need? Well, it needs sulfur and coal and obviously we're using the alternate recipe compacted coal 25 coal and 25 sulfur so bits where are we actually going to pull this from well if we do a scan for sulfur we should see some over here in this area and then if we scan for coal we should see some down there but that is not going to be enough than what we need because if we do the maths what we're looking at here is this setup here is going to control this right hand side and this setup is going to control the opposite side of the refineries so we really need to kind of get these up but before we do that we need to stress test and what i mean by that is we need to get all of this booted up and then we also need to put down some resource sinks to replicate a factory at 100 percent because this is my rule of thumb and i think everybody should do this so you don't go too far ahead and realize there's a problem next thing you know you're deleting many things so what you do you put a resource sink here to consume all of this line you put a resource sink here to consume this line and so on and so forth and then if everything is working optimally all your machines are set up you're not missing any belts you're not missing any power connectors you might have even missed a recipe or you might even got your mathematics or ratios wrong so always do that before advancing on before i even send it anywhere near them because that can cause a major ripple in my production chain which could cause the end of the fuel generators to power on and off and this is another case where we come back down to the whole oh the, the fluid is off yes the fluid is off in some places but it's not always sometimes the fluid so the first thing we need to do is actually bring in some sulfur so we're going to grab the sulfur from over there but also we're going to be heading in that direction to grab some sulfur and some coal as well so if we fly past the void here and we can see that we're going to be going around this kind of cliff face, we're then going to make our way around this side. And then just a little bit further, we're going to be able to see this bridge. We actually need to go underneath this bridge and where that tree is right there 
is that is where we're going to be pulling the sulfur and coal from. We can just see the sulfur pressing over the little ridge right there. So that's going to be the sulfur collecting, but its neighbor is actually coal as well. And the sulfur is a pure and the coal is a pure. So what we need to do now is take the sulfur and coal and take it over to the compacted coal and then kind of load balance what we need to do before it goes into the compacted coal assemblers. Right, so after some time, I've managed to get the train line up precisely around four to six hours on the live streams with many distractions. And uh, I've managed to get the train line up and running and it moves around in front of the turbo fuel refinery room and comes around here and then works its way around this whole cliff just like i was de uh, detailing a minute ago and it comes around here and yes there's no supports or anything like that because the foundations underneath the track are going to get deleted so we can kind of make it into more an aesthetic thing because the foundations underneath the track are there just for me to lay it down and then also uh, i can then replace it with some other materials later on but a lot of you have probably already requested like oh how are you doing these curves there is many 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 ways of doing curves and then as you can see if you can look into uh, the distance here we can kind of see that we're going to be arriving at the train station we've kind of put it out obviously against the the, the cliff face and not up above just because i don't want any crazy crazy like hills and all that kind of stuff but if you are wondering how to make a curve this is the most awkward way that I do it, okay? There is many other ways of doing it, and I'll even link a video in the description to Total Eclipse's video that he's just released on how to do curves. It is a simpler way, but I still prefer the way I do it because I can do it extremely fast, and uh, I don't have to, you know, do some other ways of doing it. So what we need to do is we need to grab a little bit of a foundation, and this is the way I'm doing it. This is the way I'm doing it. There's easier ways, like I just said. We're going to grab a catwalk section. We're going to place this here. We can then grab this foundation. And we're just going to place it right there. This now is here. We're going to place this foundation on top. And then you hold control and you rotate it by five degrees. So you, if you want to turn right, you're going to want to be on this side here. And if you want to turn left, you want to build this over on this side to turn left. So you're going to place this here. You're going to hold control and you're going to place that there. Next, grab this and place that here. Then you want to grab this and then place it there. And then you can kind of see we've got a little bit of things. So you want to delete these two and this one and then place this underneath here just like that and delete that top one. Now you can see what it does. And then once you get used to it, you can just start building it super quick. And then once you've got it all locked in, you can get these, these done pretty fast. And yes... Before anyone asks, yes, you can do it in blueprints. The reason I do not do it in blueprints is because uh, of vertical nudging. If vertical nudging was a thing, it would be super easy to do. Um, but uh, this is the way I do it, and it's just muscle memory for me now. And as you can see, we can just kind of get it done literally on the fly and whatnot. But without further ado, let's kind of get rid of this. But then you must be wondering, like, how do you connect two different grids up as well? Well, I can show you that also. Right, so I'm outside the turbo fuel factory. That's because this grid is not the same as this grid. It looks like it, but it's not. It's the same height. And the reason that has happened is because if you want to try and align a different grid and a different grid, and one's a little bit higher than the other, all you need to do is get a small metal pillar, get yourself a barrier, and then put the barrier at the side of the pillar. And this allows you to do this. It allows you to go up and down freely. So all you need to do is just raise it up a tiny bit. Let's say, for example, if you've got like a tiny little differential in height, grab yourself a foundation and place it here. Obviously, don't place the pillar where I placed it because you're going to get this foundation not lined up with this one, right? So it's, it's, it's a little bit clear that you need to kind of put that there, remove that here, and then put the barrier here like this. Bring the barrier to where you want it to, to go to. Let's say there, because that's the height differential, what you're making the difference of. And you can see now... It's now done that. And then if need be, if need be, all you need to do is just grab yourself a little one meter ramp once you've connected that up to then place that into there. And now you've got yourself a little bit of a ramp to go up onto that platform. And that is one way of utilizing these two tools to make a little bit of a height differential. But let's say for example, the two grids do not align like so. We can see that this is protruding on this side a little bit more. And also this foundation is overlapping this one. Well, all we need to do, let's go to this foundation first. And we already know 
that the end or where it needs to snap to if i get my barrier uh in here it needs to snap to this location here so all i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate the barrier there place that there and as we know barriers snap we're going to remove this foundation and we're going to get it and place it right there and now we've already aligned that with that foundation but now we have this problem of this corner not connecting to this one and this one is the same so we're going to remove this foundation and then all we're going to do is we're going to remove this one as well we're going to grab ourselves a beam and the reason we're going to grab ourselves a beam is we're going to connect it to here we're going to press r and we're going to change it to free form once we get that we're then going to connect it to here so now we've connected this grid to this grid via a beam we can also do the same here and we're going to do that right there once you're here because we are turning left we're going to go on this side so this counts as one and you're going to want to go four meters so one two three four we're then going to change the default build mode to default and we're going to go four meters out like this and then we're going to do the same over here we're going to come over here this is classed as one two three and four change it to default bring it out again now what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves the foundation we're going to aim at the end of the beam so like there and then you set it to default and place then you're going to jump over here and then you're going to do the same with this one and now if we move the beams we have a little bit of a dif difference but all we need to do is you can just fill that in there like that and now we are both aligned in with the grid so this one's attached and then this one's attached there is multiple ways of doing that with beams this is what just one just straight off the rip just trying to do it um for you guys on over here on youtube but now that's how you you can align two different grids uh, so use both different methods if you want to and make sure you combine them to align something that's on a totally different grid but my rule of thumb is to try and get your curve as close as possible to the platform you're trying to connect it to so don't leave it as a 45 degree angle here and try to connect it there right you're going to want to try and get it to turn as close as you can and try and line it up as best as you can and then use these methods to try and fix the problem right so back to the story at hand in regards to our current episode i've connected the call up i'm bringing the call up from down there and i'm bringing the sulfur up i've literally just put frame foundations all the way across here like this and made some kind of support because i know these bridges are kind of final but this whole system i never build uh, foundation supports or anything like that until i know the building's final the reason being what's the point of me decorating and putting foundations down here for me to only change them later on save yourself some work just allow it to flow unless it's your rule of thumb but just allow it to do what it does and that's how i do it and then i'll build foundations and decorations all afterwards i always build the skeletal thing first and that's every uh, 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 that's all i do every single time so we now have the train bringing in the coal we can see that the coal's coming in and here is another rule of thumb i am going to throw a few of these tips in here because right now it's very hard for me to do like dedicated tips and tricks videos in the actual uh marathon stream because it's just going to take too much time away from progress on building these because we're at that stage now we are building bigger projects so as you can see i'm currently stress testing this train line and again just putting a sink down and just making sure that we're bringing in uh the ore that we need so you must be wondering why not using the second output why not use both outputs well fun little fact for you you should never ever ever if you're trying to optimize your train line never utilize both of these to go into your factory you only want these two to go into a buffer and then this line to come out you, you want two lines going into your storage and one line going out so this is the one that goes to your factory never bring two outputs into your factory if you're trying to make something 100 percent efficient because when the train comes what happens is he the train line shuts both of these off okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this right here and i'm going to remove the the uh contents of this station this storage because this is a scenario now where if one item is going in one item's coming out and nothing is actually being stored so when a train enters what you're going to see happen is that is going to shut down so he's going to now unload oh now there you go so that's empty which means all the contents going to your factory are not being sent to it that is because you're not utilizing this second hole but if you was what would happen is this happens you're going to be filling at i'm using mark 4 belts so 480 480 
is 960 per minute into this, but it's only consuming 480 from the factory line. So always make sure you have two belts going into a storage and one belt going out. Nothing more, nothing less. And now you can see that the train's set back off, the coal's going in here. And if I was to now connect this up to this port, what's going to happen is this tree, you want to empty this station as fast as possible. So now we're looking into here, we're actually going to be seeing some items being stored. And this is why we refer it to as a buffer, because this buffers the inconsistency that this stops here to then send elsewhere. So TLDR, make sure you use both uh, belts to come out of there to go into your storage container and one belt out to your factory right so in regards to coal and sulfur what i want to be doing is i want to send everything down a manifold line on the underflooring a lot of people have asked how do you determine what an, how, how big an underflooring is well this is a seven underflooring and what i mean by seven is if we get a one meter foundation we can actually bring that vertical and you can see that's a seven meter right there the only reason i determine this is by getting a one meter foundation like this um and then i always use a mark four so if we just grab a, a mark four a four meter foundation and then from there i do that and that is classed as a three meter foundation because if we go and get a vertical that's a three meter normally i use this for like smelters and everything like this and then i use a seven for anything that's got double inputs uh because uh this can support up to two belts because you can't really overlap in a three meters because you have to go around because of clipping but then a uh, assembler line you're going to be using a um, multiple lines and this allows you to mainly bring in four maybe four to six lines because you can merge you can get some around to go around each other some to overlap and then the last one you mainly need is 11 meter which is a uh, when you're working with manufacturers and all them kind of big stuff so with my little tips and tricks out the way we can kind of start looking into how we want to get this on so i'm going to get this all set up and i'll get back to you with when once it's done and i'll talk to you more about it right so as you can tell i've now booted all of these up and we're actually fine and dandy and i've put these up to resource sinks because these resource sinks are replicating a factory that is consuming the coal at 100 so these are imitating these uh refineries over here because these refineries in a line of, I believe it's 21, need a uh, quite a bit of compacted coal and sulfur. I'm not, if, to be more precise, I'm, I think two, uh, 640 per each line. So now I'm very, very comfortable in saying if there is a problem with any of these refineries, we know it's not because of the efficiency of these assemblers. It's either because a belt or a heavy oil residue issue is not set up over here correctly. So I can't blame it on any of these assemblers. I've then also started to place down fuel gens over here, and that is because turbo fuel now burns at a rate of 7.5. So if I do a line of 600 fuel divided by 7.5 is 80 fuel gens we need to do. Yes, I could overclock them all to do 40 instead, but we're actually gonna be doing 80 because I wanna reserve my power shards until later. So this one side of refineries in here is actually gonna provide enough power to do 80, but if I'm not mistaken, we do have uh, this end machine which is just going into a line by itself the reason being this line as of this machine is making 600 fuel and as we know mark two pipes can't hold 600 uh more more than 600 so this is actually sending out 40 right here and the only reason this is overclocked is because we need the that additional heavy oil residue to be consumed um so we're 100 efficient on that so that 40 over here goes into if i'm not mistaken 5.333 so if we do 40 divided by 7.5, it is 5.333. And that is going to go into its own separate line. So this right here is 40 fuel gens. We now need to do another 40 fuel gens. And then at the side of that, we're going to place down 5.33 fuel gens. But the fifth one down there will be overclocked to 133.33%, which will consume the additional fluid which well the fuel which should give it should be burning at 10 per minute instead of 7.5 so all i need to do now is basically just turn this on and i'm saying basically again oh boy so i'm very comfortable with how we're looking and i feel like once i've got these fuel gens down we can kind of like power this section up uh and uh yeah bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt and we should be kind of getting things done right so what i've done is i put down a power switch down here which connects this whole left side and the whole left side upstairs to come on instead of just this side 
So right now, we've now just got this running, and it's currently doing a stress test for me. And we kind of see that we're sitting on 24, 23,000, sorry, 233. We do have to negate 4,900 off that because that is from our coal plant and the additional uh, power plant we've got over here that's kind of just burning off. So eventually, because it is a manifold line, it will take time to cook, which does mean do not worry that it's going to be going up and down all of a sudden straight away. Right now, we can kind of see it is kind of flatlining and it will go up and down just as the fluid is getting pushed down the pipes. So just be patient and let it do its thing and you should be all golden. So we can see the heavy oil residue is moving upstairs into the underflooring, as well as the compacted coal that is moving along here as well. And then if we go into the actual refinery room, we can see all of the turbo fuel is now being made. So now that's all being done, we can see that end one again is overclocked because of the blue light up there. And then if we head down here, we can now see the fuel gens have all been placed also. We've placed 40 down there, like I said. We can kind of see right at the end, yes, they are red. But like I said, you've got to let, the t let it cook of all these machines because they will fill very slowly. So I'm going to leave it until... Today is a, uh, what day is it today? Thursday, today's a Thursday. So I'm gonna leave this until Monday to cook over on the live stream. Cause we're, gonna be, we're live every single day. And a lot of you guys have been bloody going crazy. So as I said, at the end, here's five machines and the last one is overclocked to consume 10 per minute. So 7.5, 7.5 is 15. 15 plus 15 is uh, 30. And then this one is gonna be consuming 10 turbo fuel per minute to provide 40 which is what that end refinery is making so now that we've got all this set up we now need to start working on this next section which i've already been doing we've been hard at work and oh boy has this episode uh spent with we've, we've, we've had a lot of hours building this uh, and this is just a duplicate of what's downstairs and this is to prepare our spell prepare ourselves for the second power coming in so once I get this all done, we can then boot up this side. And because now I'm very comfortable with how much power we're making, I feel like I can boot the rest of these up no problem whatsoever. But I'm just giving it a couple of minutes whilst everything just kind of cooks because I've only just turned it on uh, and it's going to take a little bit of time. Because as we can see, these are currently going yellow right now. So we just need to diagnose them problems. And I love diagnosing pipe problems because they're great. And then over here, we can see that we now have a 480 line of... Uh, compacted coal moving that's because over here i've now done a little bit of a load balance on the belts which we have the coal coming down here it then this and this splitter merge together to make a 480 line and then over here this merges with this one to create i believe a 160 line and then this is duplicated over here like so and then they both go downstairs obviously this is not running because the over the refineries aren't running and that comes into here so that's a 480 line and another line here and i'm right now i'm currently getting this ready to go over here to go into these refineries so we can boot them up right so i've managed to get both the, well the right hand side the, so they're both up and running now uh, and we are now pumping turbo fuel it wasn't too long ago that i turned it on so we should still be cooking um in some certain uh, instances but we can kind of see now that we are now starting to flatline over here and flatline up here. It will kind of go up and down, like I said with the other one. But we should be targeting roughly around 46,000 megawatts when all is up and running. So now that we've got that, I now need to start thinking about what I want to do with the resin that is being produced from these refineries down here. And because we've got additional power now, what I've done is actually removed this whole fuel gen that we had down here. That is because we, this was only here for a temporary like build so we can get a little bit of a power boost to get the big um, thing in here. But if you've watched season one and season two of my playthroughs, you would know this is a small build for me. Normally, at this point in the game, we're bringing in 12 crude oil lines to make a mega oil rig or something like that. But with this one, we're only bringing in four. And this whole power plant right now is only consuming two of the lines. So we have two more lines to play with. So I was kind of curious. I'm kind of planning out um, what I kind of wanted to do. So I was like, hold on a minute. We have resin down here. I'm just wondering if I put another oil line down, which is making heavy oil residue, we'll be making 800 resin on this line. The reason we're making 800 is because if we've got 20 machines on this side, 20 times 20 is 400 so that's making 400 that's going to make 400 resin and then also its sister over here is also going to be making 400 on each line so that's a total of 1600 resin so i was like 
Hmm, should I make recycled plastic and recycled rubber? And I thought, why not? So I've got two extra crude oil lines down there. And they're coming up here to make the additional resin and heavy oil residue. And what's the only solution that I could really do with this heavy oil residue and give me as much fuel as possible to make recycled plastic and rubber? Well, it's to start work on a diluted fuel plant. Because as we know, we've diluted packaged fuel, which is the alternate recipe, by the way. We need 30 heavy oil residue and 60 packaged water, which makes 60 packaged fuel. So to make the packaged water, what we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves a packager and we're going to place it directly on the input of this refinery. So, right, like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Hello? <laughs> this keeps doing this. So if I put another one down, it fixes it. Right, so in regards to these heavy oil residue here, we already know that these are making, uh, well, it's 20 refineries. 15 of them go into a Mark II pipe to make a 600 line. Then the remaining five is making 200 refineries, uh, 200 heavy oil residue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 200 line to go into here. And then down here, I'm going to do the other 200 line. And then just beyond this, I'm then going to put down what is it, 600, I think it's 20 machines, 20 heavy oil residue. So if I was to do uh, 600 divided by 20, well, it's gonna be 30 machines. And then on the opposite side of the refineries, we just need to put down another packager, and this is gonna unpackage the actual fluid. So we have, in this machine, we have uh, bottled water, which is coming in at 60 per minute. So we need 60 water and 60 canisters. Then that is going to make 60 packaged water. That 60 packaged water goes into this refinery where it gets consumed at 60 per minute, but also needs an import of heavy oil residue at 30 per minute. That is then going to make 60 packaged fuel. That 60 packaged fuel then moves on a belt to, to this one and unpackages at 60 per minute. But look, the empty canisters are also outputting at 60 minute, which is exactly what this packager needs so all we need to do is get once we get all this set up we just need to fill all of these with empty canisters and all i'm going to do for that is i'm going to build a platform right here i'm going to get the resin from over here and get that to be consumed and make plastics in a multitude of storage so we can kind of backlog a lot of containers just so i don't have to like handcraft any or get some all that stuff and then we're just going to manifold this down here then once this machine is full of packages, once this machine is full of packages, but I'm going to leave this one from filling up because we want to leave a little bit of air in the pipe, you could say, so that it doesn't bottleneck any of the machines so we can recycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lift here and it's going to go underneath the ground like so. And it's going to come out over, he over here where the other packager is going to be, but more precisely right here. So the empty canisters that come from that come back down here to get reused again in this little loop. And this then creates a little loop for us. So we don't have to keep making canisters from our resources we could use for something else. So after placing all of these canisters and refineries down and consuming a little bit of, you know, resin over here. And obviously we can't make sure that this backs up. So we're putting it into a resource sink. This resin is now going around here into these refineries. And it's making me some a little little bit of plastic, which then goes into these constructors where it's making canisters. And we have to keep making sure this plastic gets sunk because it will back up everything else. And we don't want that. This is why we've got this here as a sail face, uh, a sail <laughs> fail safe. So then our turbo fuel plant doesn't get affected. So now that we've got all these canisters, we just need to kind of set it up into these systems over here. So as you can tell, which I've already done, we've now got bottled water We've also got fuel uh, and we've also lined up all the pipes. So all I need to do now is because we are stress testing this system for me to keep this running so I can test it and all that kind of stuff is I just need to empty these buffers. So ignore the mess. It's just a little fail safe and ignore these machines over here because this is where I've been getting my calculations from and stuff. So we're going to flush this and empty all of this fuel out of here. I can hear America screaming already. So now we can see that all of these are now moving in here. And you can see I've been daisy chaining these, which is in vanilla, which you can you can do in the game. I've talked about it in a previous video. But now we can see all of this is now moving. And if we look underneath here, we can see I've also put the lift, which recycles the canisters. So the can canisters come down here and they go back up into the machine to be reused again. So I don't need to keep feeding them, which is what I just said precisely a minute ago. We have all the water coming in. 
And now this is all ready for what it is going to go into next. But all of this water is actually coming down from over here, which is under underground. And it's just coming from this little water setup right there, going up the pipes to then come along in the uh, underpass, well, in the logistics layer to then come up to its designated lines. So the way you should always look at this system that we've been building here is this one over here, this one is all making power. This one over here is going to be making so I'm, I'm, I should really color code these to make it a little clearer for you guys as well if you're not understanding or following along. So then refineries over there are going into the turbo fuel. These refineries and these refineries is all dedicated to making diluted fuel to go into recycled plastic. Because if we're going to be bringing all of this resin, because we want this is not going to stay here forever, right? This is just going to be so I can populate these lines with canisters. So we're going to get that resin over there, that resin, and it's going to go into a refinery and it's going to make residual plastic, which requires polymer resin and water. That's going to make plastic. This plastic is then going to go into another refinery, which is going to make recycled rubber. So plastic goes in and so does fuel. This is then going to start the duplication process of plastic and rubber. So the plastic that goes into these, we're actually going to be doubling it to make rubber, but we're also at the expense of costing fuel. We are then going to go into here because the rubber is going to get made into recycled plastic. So again, the 60 rubber we're making only goes into here to make 30. So then we're going to make 60 plastic. So now we've just doubled our plastic at the consumption of the doubled rubber. But then we're going to get this plastic. We're then going to put it back into recycled rubber to make more rubber than we had before. And then we're going to go back into recycled plastic to double the plastic output again from the doubled rubber we've just done. And this is going to continuously cycle until all the fuel that we've made over here is consumed. And what I mean by consumed is we're going to try and make the most out of the fuel with as many refineries as possible until there's little bits of scraps left in these. And then little bits of scraps will load balance into a separate pipe, which will then get burnt into fuel gens just because it'd be the easiest way and all that stuff. And that is my current plan. But that is undergo uh, is underway. So if you are wanting to watch this, make sure you tune into the live streams because that is where you get to see all the behind the scenes of this. Yes, there's some chaos. There's a lot of chatting sometimes. I might be on a little bio break or whatever. Um, but hopefully, and thank you all so much for tuning into the marathon streams. If you do want to see all of this kind of now, you can actually go over to my YouTube channel which you kind of already are. And then if you go into the live category right here, you can see everything that is happening. So if you wanted to see what happened on the 15th of September, you can go into here. Now, when you're on top of... You can see me editing the YouTube videos. And you can kind of see me working on just whatever I'm doing. Adventuring, collecting mercy spheres, collecting slugs, fighting cats, and all that kind of stuff. You can go a couple of days ahead if you wanted to. And you can go to the 16th. And let's say this is where I'm starting uh, to build the refineries and going into here and heavy oil residue and started working out my calculations within Obsidian and so on and so forth. You can even see all the previous chat from the uh, from here as well. So you can kind of see who I'm talking to, but obviously I'm speaking to people on Twitch as well. And guys, I honestly can't thank you enough for the love and support because you guys have truly, truly been killing it. it it's the most followers we've ever received in streams it's the most highest viewers we've ever seen in 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 my entire content creation history it's the most twitch subs we've ever had it's the most amount of people that's ever just tuned into the stream we're hitting records uh, it's, it's crazy it's absolutely crazy and i honestly can't thank you all enough for the love and support uh, it's, it's been absolutely nuts. So thank you for being a part of my journey for this five and a half years of me making content on this shit game. <laughs> I've got to say that every time because I've just got to. So that's where we're kind of staying right now. We have trains set up. We've got Bob floating in the air. We've also got diluted package fuel being made and we've got quite a bit of fuel going now. And this plant is only going to get bigger because we've got so much recycled stuff to do. So thank you so much for watching and check out my content right here. And as always, keep smiling and I'll see you in another live stream or I'll see you in another video.